Hey guys, welcome to LA Love Creative. Today we're talking about the 70 to 200 f2.8 RF lens, my thoughts on it, and why I think you should buy it and why I think you shouldn't. Straight up, I am not a big fan of the RF lenses. I think they're amazing lenses. I think they're great optics. I think they're good build quality, but they're really expensive. That was, however, until I used the Canon 70-200 RF. And man, I am in love. So what is the purpose of using a 70-200 RF? For me, I shoot a lot of weddings. I shoot a lot of fashion work. And when you start to get into the swimwear and high fashion world, you'll notice a lot of professional photographers shoot very telephoto on their models. One of the reasons for this is when you have a telephoto lens, you compress the subject, you make them leaner, you make the, the features less distorted. So a 7200 is a great lens if you need to zoom in on someone, like at a wedding, or it's a great lens if you're shooting portraits or something like that. So recently I shot a model with the 70 to 200 RF. It was my first time using this lens. I've used the 70 to 200 Canon EF before. Awesome lens, I love those lenses. However, I wanted to see if the RF was better. And let me tell you, from across the board, this is a better lens in pretty much every area. For one, when I use the 70 to 200 EF version, it's a really long and heavy lens. Fitting it into your camera bag is hard. It's just a lens that overall, I don't see myself grabbing all the time. However, with the Canon 70 to 200 RF, they solved a lot of the issues that I had with the EF version. For one, the 70 to 200 is really compact. You could fit it in your camera bag. It's really small. Compared to my Sigma 24 to 70, this lens is like almost the same size. Another great thing about the 70 to 200 is it's very light. It's a lens that I can see my hand not getting so tired from shooting with. When it comes to image quality on the 70 to 200 RF, you're looking at a super sharp image. This image is so sharp. So many times I got excited and I had to show the model what we were shooting and we all, we both got giddy together because it just was so sharp and just the compression was amazing. So far, I've been really impressed by the image quality of the RF lenses. However, this lens really took it up another notch. When it comes to autofocus, this lens is really, really fast. This is probably one of the fastest RF lenses I've used so far on my Canon R6, R5. This is a really snappy lens. I found when I was shooting my model, she was moving around super fast. I was at 70, I was at 100, I was at 200. We were just banging through images and it was not even an issue when it came to autofocus. Now, one of the things I did not like about the 70 to 200, which is something that you can fix with settings. When I was shooting with my Canon R6 with the 70 to 200, I found that the stabilization mixed with the in-body stabilization of the camera, they were kind of not in sync when it came to video. It would do these really quick jitters and it was something that I don't think I could rely on if I was shooting a wedding or something because these abrupt motions, stuff like that, is not gonna work when you're shooting something that can only be shot one time. Um, and I found that, that if you mess with the settings, maybe turn the stabilization off on the lens, and try to stabilize the camera in a different way. Of course, that was always an option. But if you're looking for a lens that stabilization wise, you can just grab, throw it on your camera, and you're good to go, you're going to have to mess with the settings on your C70, on your Canon you know, R6, R5, 
and try to get the perfect blend there because from the get-go, it's not the best stabilization um, for video. It's not as smooth as it could be. When I shot my model, I had an awesome location. It was a pool house, it had a gorgeous pool. We were doing some swimwear, um, just really taking advantage of the natural light, the magic hour, and just playing around in the pool, shooting some really cool summer looks. One of the reasons why a 70 to 200 is great for outdoor locations is you can get further back. You can shoot at 70, you can shoot at 100, 200, and if you have enough space, you can get that portrait and you know move back and forth. So it's not the perfect lens for portraits or close-ups, but if you have enough space, this lens is great, and I advise to shoot this lens outdoors if you can. Now, the main reason why I would not consider this lens, and the main reason why, I hate to say this, I probably won't pick up this lens, is the price. The RF lenses are so expensive. This is one that I would say warrants the price tag. It's, it's expensive, and it's an amazing lens. So. Obviously, I can't say it's not worth it. However, this lens costs $2,700, and my camera costs $2,700. So my R6 and my in this lens are the same price. Of course, it's better to invest in glass than camera bodies because they'll it'll last longer. However, I just can't warrant a $2,700 lens on a $2,700 camera, um, especially when there's other lenses I would like to pick up, and I can always just you know rent this lens or get a 70 to 200 EF, which is still an amazing lens. So should you buy the Canon 70 to 200 RF? In my opinion, if you're willing to spend $2,700, $2,600 for the some of the best image quality, build quality, compactness, and just lightweight RF lenses for portraits or whatever, I suggest you buy this lens. If you need to save money, you can always go with the Canon EF version. Sigma has a 70 to 200, Tamron has a 70 to 200. There's other options out there. And if you really need a 70 to 200 and you're on a budget, maybe consider those. So that's all I have to say about the 70 to 200. Let me know if you have any questions about the lens in the comments below, and I will see you next time. See you later.